Hello, this is HT Wingnut, and today I thought I'd bring you an, a brief overview of the uh, Acer E11 laptop. Um, first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the specs, but then I'll tell you what's uh, most interesting about it. Is it's uh, has it's an 11.6 inch form factor. You know, it's about three quarters of a mil thick from here to about half a mil thick here. It weighs 2.4 pounds that I weighed. Um, it uh, you know the 11.6 inch screen with 1366 by 768 resolution. It's a TN panel, um, not touch screen. Um, it's got a decent keyboard. Um, it doesn't uh, not too doesn't flex too much. It flexes a little bit more because I took all the screws out on the bottom, but um, it's actually a decent keyboard to type on. It is a little bit tinny. It's got a uh, good wide uh, touchpad with the left and right mouse button clicks on the touchpad. It comes with an Intel Pentium N3540 CPU. Um, it comes with 2 gigs of RAM, 250 gig hard drive, and uh, 802.11n um, wireless adapter. Um, it also has gigabit ethernet, which is a nice feature. Now, interesting thing about this is that it's a $200 to $250 laptop, depending on where you buy it. It's 200 bucks on Amazon right now. But even more interesting is that the uh, components are upgradable. Uh, typically in the $200 to $250 price range, you end up with an Atom equipped um, I basically call it a mobile phone type laptop um, that has 2 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of flash storage, nothing is upgradable and uh, it's basically a disposable laptop. Where at least this, um, one, the CPU is a 7.5 watt TDP CPU with a full 4 cores um, compared to like an Atom which also can have 4 cores but it's only like 2 watts to 4 watts TDP and uh, but it has 2 gigs of DDR3L 1333 megahertz RAM, which is upgradable. It's a regular RAM slot. Also has a 2.5 inch um, 7 mil height um, hard drive, which can be swapped out with an SSD or whatever drive you want that's within the 7 mil form factor. You can also swap out the uh, wireless um, adapter. And I actually did all that on this machine and ended up with 8 gigs of RAM, a 250 gig SSD, and an 802.11 AC adapter. And this machine is, uh, when you add all that, even if you buy it new, I actually had those components, but you're talking about a, 450, about a $450 laptop that is actually a, a great uh, portable machine. It does uh, general processing great, um, and it uh, manages um, your basic web browsing and office tasks. It's not real f uh, feature rich. I mean, it's it's got a plastic uh, housing everywhere, but it's actually pretty durable, rigid. Um, it's got a slight uh, dot pattern on the lid. Um, the there's not too many ports, and along the front there's nothing. Along the left hand side, it has a uh, card reader and a headphone jack. Along the left side, it has nothing. But on the back, it has a power jack and I think it's a 40 watt power adapter but I've only seen this thing draw about 20 watts total um, gigabit ethernet nice feature USB 2.0 USB 3.0 and an HDMI port um, and upgrading this thing really is not that difficult um, if you know how to turn a screwdriver and are, are a little bit uh, um, I guess delicate when it comes to the connectors um, but you can upgrade everything without with, by just removing this bottom panel there's 13 screws here just Phillips head regular old Phillips head screws so not a big deal there. Once you remove the screws you can access uh, the bottom. Well, one more thing I wanted to note is this also comes with Windows 8.1 64-bit with Bing they call it with Bing because I guess Microsoft offers the OS for free or greatly reduced rate to OEMs um, if they and it, it forces them to use I, Internet Explorer as a default browser as well as Bing as a default serv or a search provider, um, search engine. But um, the user can easily change that. It's not locked in in any way, rate, or form. The problem is that if you want to do a clean install, there's no publicly available ISO, but they are available on the web. And I'll leave a link in the description on how to do that. I greatly recommend it because this machine comes with a ton of crapware out of the box. Um, and with the 2 gigs of RAM, and the 5400 RPM hard drive, it just bogs down like crazy. So get rid of that. Add an SSD, uh, more RAM. This thing is, is a great uh, portable uh, laptop. Um, 
So you can see here, here's the SSD. Um, there's the wireless card. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit better here. The SSD, the wireless card, obviously the main board with your keyboard connector. Um, not sure that's connected to what? That's to the speakers, that's for the power, to the battery. This other thing, this thing comes with a uh, 30 watt hour battery. And it gets about, I'd say, on average, five and a half hours of life with when you're of usable life um, when it's on. And your connector for the LCD. Now, to access the RAM, you don't see it here. You've, and the CPU, you've got to remove one, two, where's the other one? One, two, three, four, five screws. You've got to remove the uh, wireless adapter. And then, uh, what you do is you got to remove these cables. I'd recommend you pull the power cable first and foremost. That pulls straight out. Um, flip up this latch, pull this out, pull this out, pull this little bar out, and you can slide that connector out. And I leave this in place, and this whole thing just kind of flaps up and over, and you can access the RAM and the CPU. The other thing is the CPU is actually passively cooled. There is no fan on this machine, so it's very quiet. Um, it does have a heat sink with a uh, copper heat pipe on it to help dissipate the heat, but it touches down to the, the backing plate to the keyboard, which helps dissipate the heat. The keyboard does not get that hot. I mean, it's a 7.5 watt TDP CPU, so it's not like it's going to burn you up or anything. Um, in any case, I will uh, take some time to actually do that for you and show you how to access the RAM on the other side and how easily you can swap that out. I figured I might as well do this uh, live. Let's make sure we get this centered. I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, one first thing I do always is disconnect the battery. This just pulls out like that. Then this pulls up. This pulls out. Um, this does this oh yeah this slides forward forward and that pulls right out. Uh, the one thing I'm concerned about is the speaker right here is these uh, cables are really thin and that connector is really thin but let me go ahead and remove these screws and you're also going to want to remove this the Wi-Fi card oh, and also your SSD. The nice thing is that the SSD or hard drive is not screwed down or anything it's just wedge between these little spring clips. And all you got to do is lift this up carefully. Get this sucker disengaged. Okay. It's just that part got a little stuck. Move the screws out of the way. And voila. There is your, your CPU is located underneath here. Um, then you've got this heat pipe running along this length here, um, which helps cool it. And I'm assuming it touches down somewhere in here um, to help uh, dissipate the heat throughout this backing plate. Um, but I also, just a couple of screws here, this whole thing moves up, removes. I replaced the thermal paste and it was running about 75 to 80 C at load, um, now it runs, doesn't even hit 70C. I used IC Diamond for that. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's your RAM slot. Just a traditional RAM slot. DDR3L, low voltage, 1.35 volt. Um, the system uses one point, the system can accommodate up to eight gigs of 1333 megahertz. So you can throw in a 1600 megahertz module, just run at 1333 megahertz, that's fine. I put in a uh, Kingston, um, 8 gig DDR3L 1600 megahertz and it runs fine at uh, 1333 so to put it back together just reverse the process button it up and away you go but uh, you can see it's uh, got expandability which is a nice feature that a lot of other laptops of this price range um, and performance do not have